It's free. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank 
enters of this world and do his kingdom business. Um, I have a couple of announcements for you before we share the word of God. Um, there will be a church relocation update today via Zoom, so you can just trust in your regular EM Bible study group. Uh, if you're not in the group, you can join the group at 12.30 p.m. Uh, and then uh, you can find the link in the email that I sent you during the week. And so, uh, Brother Silk is in charge of the uh, relocation task force. And they've been doing an amazing job and they have some updates for us for you to look at and to pray about, so uh, don't miss that if you can. Uh, and uh, after the, the follow-up would be, you will give, give it about a week to think about the options, and then um, next Sunday we will make a decision together, uh, which among the two locations we will relocate. So, um, this will be a holy week for Cornerstone Church, a prayerful week, a week for, for you, for you guys to really um, make the step in faith. So, um, we look forward Forward to another meeting next Sunday, probably in the afternoon, not too late. Uh, it will be a congregational meeting and uh, we'll confirm our decision together. So please and pray, be in prayer for God's next step for us. Uh, next Sunday is Thanksgiving Sunday, and uh, as I announced last week, no fruits or vegetables this year. I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, we will be giving part of the Thanksgiving offering to the Ladies Ministry and Heritage Home and also to um, other ministries that are in need that we are sponsoring. So have that in mind and please um, remember to give your thanksgiving off and to Lord this year. And also next week we'll have communion service because it's the fourth third Sunday of the month. Now well, uh, it's Thanksgiving, you got to have communion, right? So if you're here, you can participate. If you're home, you can either pick up a communion kit from church, or you can make your own uh, and participate during the service time next Sunday. It will be a regular Sunday service. We won't do a joint service next Sunday. It will be 10 o'clock. Um, as of right now, same, same format. So we'll just tune in and we can enjoy the Lord's uh, bringing us as body of Christ together. And uh, as a uh, Teacher Daniel has mentioned Pastor May is resigning uh, as of today. People have been asking me why, and uh, 
I just say, ask her. <laughs> I don't, don't want her to go, actually. And she has personal reasons, and she's going back to Korea, I believe, the first week of December. So, uh, please, um, congratulate her and thank her for being, being the minister, being the minister here. I think our pastor may as the pastor has gone the extra mile all the time to serve our church and we are thankful for that. And, uh, and as uh, Pastor Mr. Uh, Daniel has said, we want to pray for the next pastor. Uh, we have some candidates, and uh, we are in prayer for that uh, selection process. So, thank you for your prayers and your support. I think that's it. Uh, there will be a financial report um, at the end of the service, Pastor Jim. Yes, could you see to it that there's a financial report after the service so our members can hear uh, financial update. We update our finances every quarter uh, and uh, we all put it in the books and every week we put it, we announce it to you every quarter. So today is that day and hopefully that will be uh, uh, broadcasted out today after worship. Um, okay, let's go to the Word of God. I've spoken too much. Um, let's go to the Book of Acts, Chapter 26. Verses 19 to 29. And this is how I suggest we read. Um, I'll read verses 19 to uh, 28, and we can read the last verse together, wherever you are at, at this time. At home or your church, we read the last verse together. It'll you can find it in your Bibles. Acts chapter 26, verse 19. And let me read these uh, verses before the last verse. Therefore, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus, then in Jerusalem, and throughout all the region of Judea, and also to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God performing deeds in keeping with their repentance. For this reason, the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. To this day, I have had the help that comes from God, and so I stand here testifying both to small and great, saying nothing but what the prophets and Moses said would come to pass, that the Christ must suffer and that 
by being the first to rise from the dead. He would proclaim light both to our people and to the Gentiles. And as he was saying these things in his defense, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, you are out of your mind. Your great learning is driving you out of your mind. But Paul said, I am not out of my mind, most excellent Festus. But I'm speaking true and rational words. For the king knows about these things, and to him I speak boldly, for I am persuaded that none of these things has escaped his notice, for this has not been done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you believe. And Agrippa said to Paul, In a short time, would you persuade me to be a Christian? And Paul said, Whether short or long, I want to God that not only you, but also all who hear me this day might become such as I am, except for these chains. Then the king rose, and the governor and Bernice and those who were sitting with them. And when they had withdrawn, they said to one another, This man is doing nothing to deserve death or imprisonment. Let's read 32 together, shall we? Where you go? And a Agrippa and to Festus, this man could have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. Amen. I went over it. I was so excited in reading God's word. Um, I want to ask you uh, this question. Have you heard this phrase, show me? Show me. Um, I think I saw this, part, uh, this uh, phrase in a license plate. A license plate. Uh, and, uh, I was driving on the highway, and uh, the cars from a state called Missouri have this phrase, the show me state. I wonder what that meant, so I, I looked it up, and uh, I found out some interesting facts about the show me. State, right? uh, back in the 1899, there was a U.S. Uh, congressman. He was a congressman of the House of Representatives from 1897 to 1903. His uh, name was uh, Van Diver, Van 
by Mr. Van Diver, William Van Diver. He was a congressman back in the day, the 1899, and he was a part of a, a naval Council, you say, the Naval Committee, a council within the government. And uh, he was attending a banquet in Philadelphia concerning these naval affairs and all the government business. I guess uh, people were making a case for something to you know, push for some kind of legislation and whatnot. And uh, Mr. Van Diver had the chance to stand and speak his opinion. And this is what he said, I come, of, come from a state that raises corn and cotton and cup livers. I guess they're like some kind of sunflowers. And Democrats and false Frothy eloquence, frothy eloquence neither convinces or satisfies me. I am from Missouri. You have to show me. So that's where the phrase really became popularized. It's from Missouri, so you gotta show me. <laughs> you gotta just, not just talk about it, not just say elegant words and, you know, describe with flowery language, but show me. In fact, show me the money, kind of thing. You know, even though it's been like hundred something years from when uh, Mr. Van, Van Diver said this, it still rings true in our culture today. Maybe more, all the more true than ever before. You know, today's culture is a show me culture, I think. Uh, people. Just don't listen to words. They want to see visually what that means. People don't want to just talk, talk, talk. They want money to talk. They don't want abstract philosophical truths but concrete, real facts that they can hold on to and verify. That is the philosophy of the world today. But that is a challenge for us, isn't it? That situation is a challenge for us. We are witnesses of Jesus Christ. Witnesses who are to speak the words of truth, the words of God, to light that there is some concrete, visible evidence and facts. Because most of our language is like love, faith, grace, worship, Holy Spirit, and hope. You can't 
really see hope. You can't really touch love. Whatever language is philosophical and abstract into the world, it can be meaningless. So, our message as a witness of Jesus Christ is it just pass by them a lot of times. In fact, if you talk to the world enough about the gospel, gospel, Jesus, this, Jesus, that, they will eventually say, show me the gospel. And hence, the title of my sermon today is, show me the gospel. I want to ask this question throughout this message. How can we be a a messenger, a witness that is heard by the world? Especially in a time of pandemic, when there is so much uncertainty and so much fear, so much doubt about the future. How can we be a messenger, a witness of Jesus that can give a clear a concrete message to the world so that the world will hear, can hear, can understand. How to be a witness that is heard by the world is the question of this morning. Background of the text that we read this morning. Uh, We kind of, you know, fast forward a lot, actually. Last week we talked about the second missionary trip of Paul how he went into Europe after the Macedonian call, right? And the first city he visited was Philippi. And we saw the jailer, you know, converted through the salvation that Paul and Silas was able to offer. Family. Now we skip <laughs> all the way to chapter 26, and this is the end of the third missionary journey. So Paul has been traveling all over Asia, modern day Turkey, southern Turkey, Turkey. And he's uh, crossed over to Europe and over the Asian Sea and into the Greece, Greek Peninsula. He's been to Athens, Corinth, and back to uh, Ephesus, the great city of Ephesus in Asia Minor. And now we find him at the very end of the third trip. He is in Jerusalem. Uh, he went all over the world, all over Asia, all over Europe, but as he knew, as he knew. And everywhere he went, he spread the gospel, he planted churches, and he confirmed and strengthened the churches. And so there was great fruit, there was great joy in the empire, in this pagan nation. But 
purportedly as those born Christian, born John, born Hope, those all also antagonists, they were opposition from his own people group, his own Jews, who he just pay. So the reason actually Paul had to travel from one place to the castle he was on the move every like six months was because he was being chased, in fact. These persecutors were hated Paul to the guts. His message, they thought, was a cultic message that Jesus was not the Son of God. And so, and then Paul also preached that, you know, you have to observe the Jewish rituals and customs that we saw last week. And so this made the the Jews were angry, upset. So they, with a passion, they were chasing after 